Welcome to the Art Lady's Home. Today's video is on how I made these ceramic hollyhock garden stakes. This is a very easy to do flower using a simple pattern that you trace onto slabs of clay. In the video, I demonstrate how to form the hollyhock flowers. I also have videos, separate videos, on how to make the little clay bird at the top, as well as patterns for you to just simply print out, cut, and trace. Links to the patterns are underneath the title, so just click on the title of this video and it will take you to the patterns if you're interested in patterns. But a lot of artists can just do this themselves, but I provide the patterns for those that need a little extra help. I hope you find this video helpful, and if you like it, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Now I'm gonna show you step by step how to make the clay hollyhock flower. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make those hollyhock flowers. What you do is you trace a pattern or circular shape, and I have mine ruffled. I do have patterns in three or four different sizes for the hollyhocks, and I have the, the leaves and the little buds and whatnot. If you are interested, just click on the title. It'll take you to a link to the Teacher Pay Teacher store where I have the Art Ladies store. Once you have that, I drew in where I want my petals, and the hollyhocks have five petals. And then what I did is I have some dotted lines where you just make a slice. So on the dotted lines in my pattern, otherwise you can do these as radial design, a radial design where your petals are gonna be. And then what I do is I take water and I just simply rub out the edges. I want it round my edges. I don't want these edges to be squared off the way they are at right angles. So I'm just rounding those edges out. When you pinch your fingers together like this, it just makes the clay a little bit smoother and nicer. Now this clay has been rolled out as a slab for a few days and I roll quarter inch thick slabs and I, then I make them a little bit thinner I just have a small rolling pin that I use and I just thin them out a little bit because I think quarter inch is a little bit too clunky for these flowers and thicker, I like it a little bit more delicate. So just the edges I'm thinning out and smoothing. Don't change the thickness in here. Otherwise it becomes too floppy. Now what you're gonna do, because we've scored these or sliced these edges here, is I'm gonna round starting on one of the petals around one of your edges and then I'm bringing it over so I'm overlapping now them and I'm giving a little push this now I'm going to the next one and because I'm making my own little slip in here I don't need to score and slip this I'm blending it out so much that this has softened this clay and made a little bit of a its own little liquid slip here. We can see it's all over my hands. So you don't need to score and slip for this. And it's together all in one piece and it's connected down here. So there's no really no need for it. I'm pressing this edge so it's rounded. And I'm gonna lay it on top here and just give a little press. So we're forming, it's cupping this now. So we're forming the flower. So I'm gonna do the same here, pressing my edges. And I find that making it as a slab is easier. It's just faster and easier, I think, than, than making individual. I do have a video on another channel that shows how to do these as a pinch and a, just hand formed. And this is a lot quicker. Smoothing this out, overlapping. And you can give it character by pressing out some of these. I'm gonna have this dipping down. I'm gonna dip this one down. On this one, oh, this is already stuck. I wanted to have it come out a little bit. Just to show different levels and layers. 
And then I'm gonna do the same here. This is going to overlap. This I'm gonna bend in. So I'm kind of pressing and pulling. Rounding. I don't wanna show thick fingerprints. And then the last layer is coming in here, the last petal. And you can kind of play with it until you like it, until you're satisfied with what it looks like. I'm gonna pull this out. They have very delicate lace, kind of silky looking petals that are very beautiful and thin. So thin out the edges a little bit here as you're pulling. Almost transparent. And then I'm gonna cup the back. I'm pushing this together now here. So I'm pushing down here as I'm pulling here. So I'm kind of making this almost into a, midi, a little bit of a nub. Then I'm gonna put some clay on the inside. So I have some really thick slip and I'm just gonna put that in there, filling up that little space. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a center. The pistils and the stamens I'm gonna make and the filaments, and I'm just gonna do it in a grouping for the center because they do have a distinguished centerpiece. So I'm taking a little bit of a piece of clay here, just rolling it in a ball, so the piece is about the first digit of your pinky. Roll it into a quick ball, then a coil, a thick coil. Then what I'm gonna do is, that may be a bit big. I'm gonna wet it up a little. And I wanna pull this th a little bit thinner because I want it to be oh, thinner than your pinky and come to a point. And then I'm going to press out the bottom so that it comes, flares out a little bit here. Score, so I'm pressing out the bottom, then I'm gonna score it, put some really thick slip on there. And then I'm gonna press it into this wet clay in the middle. Give it a little tug and then I'm going to use a tool just to press it down in here for that centerpiece and it's going into that really wet clay so that'll stay in bond. I'm going to smooth out any of this with a paintbrush and smooth out any areas in here with the paintbrush. Same thing with any of these sides, the way they're overlapping. And then I'm gonna rough up the center here because this is where all the pistils and stamens and filaments are. So I'm kind of roughing this up in here. I'm not gonna put all of the massive detail in, but I'm just giving it, cause it kind of looks just like a feathery, tip here. If you look at the insides of a real hollyhock. So I'm doing a lot of little lines. There's, I'm forming some crumbs and what will be sharp edges once this is fired. So I'm going to smooth it out in a minute. I'm kind of opening up the tip here with some deeper lines. And then I'm going to run a brush some, just some wet, a brush through here a little bit. So that's giving it a lot of texture with this tool. Like so. Now what I'm gonna do is flip it over and I'm going to 
put a hole through it so that it can attach to the garden stake. I run a needle tool through it first. What you can also do is if you look here, I have a little bit of a nub. If you don't have much of a nub, you can always add a little bit more of this clay. This part of the clay is going to support the zip tie when it comes through here. So if you feel that this isn't thick enough, you can always just add a little patty of clay to this just to make this a little bit bigger nub. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'll show you how I did that. I just made a little kind of a circular piece here and I'm just pushing it in. It depends on how you form these, but I just like to be safe. And then what it does is I'm able to then sit it in the kiln on a glaze fire. If I turn around and give it a few taps like so, it can balance perfect in the kiln. And then I can glaze all this. And then what I do is I just use underglaze for the bottom of this. So that'll work out nice. Sometimes you end up with more clay at the bottom. Sometimes you have less. So if that happens, this is a simple solution. That way I have at least a quarter inch where my needle's going through. So I'm gonna make a hole with the needle tool first on both sides. And then I send the pencil or the paintbrush end through to make it a little bit bigger. That way my zip ties fit in nicely and I find just the thickness of a paintbrush works well. It's a little bit thinner than a pencil and I don't want a giant huge hole, but then with shrinkage, this is gonna be perfect. This fits the zip tie nicely and then give it a little tap, and then it's gonna sit perfect like so. And then you can adjust this if you want this to be curved. You know, you can do your own little, if you want more of these more prominent lines, you can put them in, um, but that's up to you. And I'm gonna flip, just do a few more adjustments before I let it dry. They, they dry pretty quickly for me. So, and as I'm adjusting, you see, I'm changing this shape and it just will make it a little bit more delicate. Study the real hollyhocks and you'll see how the edges are frilly and how they have little curves. They're not perfectly straight and that's what makes it beautiful. So I'm gonna put this one up. I don't wanna overdo though. This one I'll turn up. Actually, I'll flip this one down. And then you can even carve in, if you want some te texture lines in here, you can put a little bit of these in. Some long ones and some short ones in here. But that's up to you how you want to finish it off. But there you have the hollyhock flower. The glaze is Fairy Rose by Coyote. And here's a video on how to attach the garden flowers to a stake. I also have videos on how to form the clay bird. And I have patterns for the bird as well. Don't forget to check out my other clay videos. This is on gladiolas. And I also have a fun one on building castles.